Okay, guys, welcome back to another Paris, Texas a podcast. We are here with someone who's fairly new to me. I, I haven't had many guests that I didn't know pretty much nothing about, but this is one of them. Um, Jenny Wilson. She is, is it president or? Executive director. E- executive director of the United Way. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have, well, let's let's do the question first. I always kind of jump into the the convo, but let's ask a question first. Are you a Parisian or are you a parasite? I'm a parasite. Oh. My husband is from here, seven generations both sides, but I'm not. I've been here about 15 years. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But you love Paris, obviously. I do. It's my community. It's my home. Um, from your work, I can tell, obviously. I actually have a connection with the United Way because Liam last year did, he kind of did a little campaign with you guys. Yes. Where we went to as many as, because uh, you have 24, 25? We have 24 this coming year, yes. Uh, and I think it was somewhat similar last year, yes. right? Uh-huh. In number wise? 23. And we went, I don't remember, I think it was like 12 maybe or 11 different yeah. ones we went to for trying to highlight some of those organizations that you guys help. They were wonderful. They were great. We put we put them on our Facebook page. We showed them at our annual meeting. They were just really fun. They were great. Thank you. So I, we're, me and Liam are big fans <laughs> of the United Way. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so you've been here for 15 years. Mm-hmm. How, where were you before that? We were in Chicago. Chicago. And where are you, where, uh, where are you from, born from? <laughs> are you ready for the story? I was born in western New York. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm, about an hour and a half outside of Buffalo at a place called Chautauqua. Chautauqua okay. Institution. Um, and <clears throat> I spent half of my life growing up in Florida, meaning like six months out of the year. And the other six months out of the year, I spent up at Chautauqua Lake. My dad was a writer, and so we moved with the seasons. That's awesome. So, what, ki- what kind of writer? Uh, freelance writer, writing mainly for magazines. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so what, uh, what did you do? Like, what was, what did you do growing up? Were you uh, something special in school? Cheerleader? <laughs> I was, I was a cheerleader. I played tennis. I grew up dancing. Oh, yeah. Hey. yeah. Any, any theater? A little bit of theater, but not much. Okay. I, I, I got into theater later in my life, but my son's huge in theater. Yes. So we're kind of theater parents at the moment. I was a theater parent. My kids grew up at PCT and oh, then we awesome. did all the high school shows. And so, yes, I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So you were there and then you, you moved, where'd you move to next? So I went to college in Orlando at the University of Central Florida. Awesome. And then from there I moved to Boston and went to graduate school at Boston College. Um, and then met my husband and I started traveling down to the New York City area on weekends. And then when I graduated from Boston College, we moved to Memphis. Wow. We spent two years in Memphis and then we moved to Chicago and we were there for eight years and then we came here. Man, you have been... <laughs> I've been all over the place. A lot of places. <laughs> yeah. What was your favorite? Oh, gosh. Well, besides Paris, because we're yes, yeah, obviously I mean, we love Paris, but I love them all. But really, Chicago just stole my heart. I oh. love that town; it's great. I've been to Chicago, but it was only just brief. I like in and out. Yeah, um, you got to go back. It's awesome. I've, I've been only to Buffalo go in the summer, and yeah, Buffalo is having a little reemergence. You know, um, they they went some through some rough times, but yeah, I've been there and I've been to New York mul- multiple mm-hmm. times, all over New York State. But um, so. Yeah, I've I've, tra- I've traveled a little bit myself, so I've I've seen this and that, but that is amazing. Um, okay, so so what did you, what was your major in college? So in undergrad, my major was journalism track of public relations. Okay, um, and then in in grad school, I have an MBA, but I concentrated in marketing. Okay. So I combined those two fields. Um, I was the public relations director for the Memphis Symphony when we lived in Memphis. And then when we moved to Chicago, I was the marketing director for the Grant Park Music Festival. Awesome. Which is, it was such a great job. That is the outdoor free music festival in the summer in Chicago. So go back to to Chicago in the summer. And almost every night of the week, they have um, concerts in the park. Awesome. Three or four nights of the week, it's the symphony, and then they'll have special pop concerts and things like that. So it was great, yeah. So you you were, did you always want to be kind of this kind of, uh, like a like a director of, of events and and stuff like this? <laughs> Is that like something you've always wanted to do? Um, or was there another? I, I've just re- constantly reinvented my, reinventing re- myself. That's awesome. You know? um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. I just sort of. You seem really good at it. <laughs> you <laughs> everything has led up to this point you know awesome every little thing and i know exactly i know how that works because that's <laughs> how i got to where i am it's just every door opened just right yes um awesome tell me so let's go back to paris mm-hmm. so you've been here for 15 years yes you've been at united way for how long a year a year mm-hmm. what did you do here prior to that 
Okay, so um, the past nine years, I've been a yoga instructor. Ooh, my yes. wife loves yoga. Love yoga. Um, was teaching that four days a week before I came here. I still teach on Saturday mornings, and I teach a free class to all the Paris um, ISD teachers who, who want wow. to come. I do that actually tonight as my class. Um, my husband and I actually used to own eParis. So, oh, uh, he started it. We, That's we awesome. Con- we conceived that in the backyard uh, 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 over many glasses of wine. And um, <laughs> after many years of him begging me to please go in there, I finally did. And I ran it for probably four years and okay. then we sold it. And um, that was wonderful. In addition to that, I was a preschool teacher at okay. Central Presbyterian. I had a little once a week class, a little mommy and me class for two year olds. And so... Um, and prior to all that, I started that when I was 40. I kind of meshed together these these various little career paths. Um, I was just a stay-at-home mom before yeah. that. So I, and that's what my wife is now. Yes. She loves it. Yeah, it was great. But when the youngest went to kindergarten and I turned 40 that year, that was the year I said, I got to start doing something. That's awesome. <laughs> And so I, I think I saw, did I see something on Facebook? Like you're, you're, you only have one that is in school yes. now. Like they're all out of school or at yes. least in college? Yes. Yeah, so my daughter started college last year. Whew. And then my son started college this year. So they're only 17 minutes apart. And so we just have the little one at home. He's 13 and he's in eighth grade. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, it's see, a big I don't, change. I don't even want to think about those days. Yeah, that happens really, really fast. Oh. But, you know, they're so happy and... Um, I loved having teenagers. And everyone was like, oh, teenagers. It was so much fun. And, and having children as adults and getting to know them as adults is just wonderful. It's cool. Every, every bit of it's fun. I, I, I don't know. So, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this, but cause I feel like I'm a better adult with my mom, like with my mom than I was a kid. I was, I was a rough kid growing yeah, up. Yeah. Um, oh, so I definitely feel like I had the better <laughs> relationship with my mom yeah. as an adult. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why. The, yeah. I'd have to, that would take some like real deep discussions with my mom but yeah um but uh i i don't know kids i love them but they scare me at the same yeah. time <laughs> and i'm fixing to have another one. Oh, congratulations yeah, november that's 10th so awesome oh i have two november babies that's wonderful oh. yeah yeah it'll be november uh october and then um wait well, you know it's october november and then christmas december and then in january so, oh wow! So we have like big things happen every like like the like end of the year month. is really busy. Yeah, that's just wonderful <laughs> um, though. It's so fun. I love kids. Yeah, it's um, great. I, I, I probably because I'm a big kid, uh, to be honest. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're at the United Way. I want to dive mm-hmm. into United yeah, Way because absolutely, I think a lot of people probably don't even know what you guys do. They really don't, which is surprising because we've been here for 75 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and okay, United Way for people that don't know, it's it's not just a Lamar County thing. It's right. it's a bigger. It's worldwide. Give us a little bit of rundown of what exactly it is. Sure. So it actually started as the community chest. You know the the cards on the Monopoly board. Yeah. That is the origin of the United Way. Um, but every single United Way is locally run. So mm-hmm. even though it's in, I believe, 144 countries, and of course, the United States has the most chapters. They're all locally run. We make our own decisions. We have our own bylaws and policies. We get to decide who we're going to fund, who we're not going to fund. And so when we raise money, all that money stays here. That's awesome. It is awesome. And it always goes back into the community. It does. So we have, like we said before, we have 24 partner agencies. We've already allocated our grants out. We've already allocated out $500,000 for 2019. Mm -hmm. We do it a little backwards here. Um, We make our grants in the spring and then we raise the money in the fall. Okay. (laughs) So we have promised them $500,000. So we have to raise Mm -hmm. that much money. And um, our grants range from $500 all the way up to over $60,000. Awesome. And for, you know, for a lot of these agencies, we are their biggest donor and they yeah. really depend on us. And yeah. a lot of the smaller agencies really can't do the fundraisers for themselves. I mean, everybody thinks of the big ones like Boys and Girls Club and Salvation Army and Downtown Food Pantry and New Hope Center, all these wonderful, wonderful organizations. But we also have really small organizations like RSVP and the Literacy Council and the Child Welfare Board that don't have all that name recognition and right. aren't out there fundraising, but they're really important to our community. Right. And I was going to say something about that I think people don't realize the range of different yeah. uh, of different organizations anywhere 
anywhere from, you know, it, it's not just, uh, you know, food pantry where we just help people that are hungry. It's not just people who are, are in, in situations in life where they're afraid for their life or stuff like that. I know there's a lot of organizations in town for that. And so it's just a really wide range of organizations that you support. And it's amazing that you are able to... It, you're able to find people to help one organization that's helping many organizations. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> we don't just raise money for our organizations. We also are constantly monitoring them and screening them and um, making sure they are financially stable, but also really fostering all those partnerships and collaborations yeah. because the agencies all know that they can't solve all the problems. Um, right. They each are doing their own little piece of the puzzle, but we need all the pieces of the puzzle to work together Correct. for our community. And so that's really the main job of the United Way. I, I consider it even more important than the just raising money, money. Mm -hmm. is making sure that all of the agencies are working together, that there's no duplication of services, but there's also no gaps. Mm -hmm. And so that's really important. It's really critical to make our community function. Yeah, I, I, I totally see that because I see you, I, I I try to be in as much uh, community stuff as I can, <laughs> and you seem to be at all of the things that I'm at. So I feel like you are very invested in the community. Yeah, absolutely. Always, always wanting to be there. And not that you know anyone before you weren't. Yeah. Just that, like I've, I, I've only mainly because I've only been involved is it, to the extent that I'm in in the last year, and that's been since you've came on board. So that's why I've seen you so much. Sure, and we. But we we do see the same people, yeah. all the same things, right? We have a great community. We have a lot of people who are just incredibly devoted. We have a great group of volunteers who are involved in the campaign. I do not raise this $500,000 by myself. Right. Our campaign cabinet is about 20 individuals who are all out there working really hard right now. We have companies all over town running their United Way campaigns right now. And we're just so grateful to everyone who donates, everyone who volunteers, and everyone who's a part of the United Way. I actually just had a podcast with Paul Allen, and he brought up how like a lot of people that come into Paris are shocked by how big of a hearts mm. the volunteers are in yeah. Paris, and how willing they are to show up to places and help with stuff, and help mm. you know help at events and help raise money and whatever whatever the need is. The the fact that there's so many people there here, you know, especially at big events like the uh, the Tour de Paris, where like mm. that that requires a lot of volunteers. Yes a lot of the community yeah. to make that happen. And, and it is truly amazing how many people come together to help every event that happens. It's really cool to, to see it happen even within your, inside of your yeah. agency. It's a really generous community in terms of the dollars they donate, in terms of the hours they donate. I mean, I'm really humbled by it and really blown away by how much generosity of spirit is in this community. It's really great to see. That's awesome. So there. So obviously, you're looking forward to um, to the uh, raising the money for this yes. next year. Is there any other big thing that you're looking forward to in the next year, two, three years? Yeah, absolutely. So this year we started a scholarship program and we opened it up to all high school graduating seniors from all five school districts. But they had to write an essay. They had to write a 500-word yeah. essay. And they had to write about how one of our partner agencies um, really helped them. Yep. And so when I got the essay, the winning essay, I shared it with my board. I started to read it, and I couldn't even read it. I mean, we and I don't think there was a dry eye around this big board table. It was incredibly moving. And so I am pretty sure that our board is committed to growing that scholarship program because a lot of times we think about the united way just giving away the money yeah um, to other agencies but we actually do run a couple of our own programs so we have the scholarship program um, working with some of the other agencies we started three weeks ago a getting ahead program where we have 12 individuals going through a 16 week program of financial literacy okay. uh, tax season we do free taxes Awesome. or a VITA site. And so last year we did about 300 free um, tax returns. And so we're doing a lot of different things and that's really where I want to see us continue to grow. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm excited about. That's crazy. And that, that makes my heart warm hearing about, because a lot of times you... Especially when you're in a in a agency that that it gives to so many different mm -hmm. people, it, a lot of times it's hard to see the ba the back end of that, like yeah. to see, because you're you're 
I, and I'm not saying y'all don't do this. I'm just saying a lot of times you can get so caught up in like working with the agencies that you don't get to really meet. That agency gets yes. to meet like the people and they get to be face to face with them. But to have that, that, that essay yeah. and see how you were able to at least be a small part of helping that person. That's that. that yeah, would... it was really, really powerful. And again, when I talked about how we're able to identify gaps, because we know what all the programs and services the agencies are doing, we kind of have this, you know, view from a top. And when we do see a gap, like last year, we realized that <clears throat> we have a real deficiency in the number of foster care parents here. Mm-hmm. We have 120 kids in foster care and we have about nine foster care families. And so these kids are being shipped everywhere. But for the ones that are here, um, there is a need for them to come together and to be able to just relax and to have fun and to share their resources. And so there is a CPS worker in town who puts on various events for foster care families, Christmas events and uh, foster parent night out events and just fun events. And there really wasn't the funding for that. So that is another program that we directly serve. It's not really a grant. It's our own program. And we call it the foster care family support program. So yeah, we're, we're constantly looking for where we can step in and help. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So do any of your, are any of your kids following in your footsteps of any sorts? No. The two that are out? No. <laughs> no. Uh, my daughter is an English major and oh. my son is a film major. So they're just going to be, you know. You're going to have to hook him up with me whenever he comes into town. I, I would will. love to sit and just oh, talk. Oh, yeah. I can talk film for all, like okay. all day. Awesome. He has, um, you should check out his films. There are Digimol. Digimol is on YouTube. And wow. uh, you can see his films. And uh, yeah, he's, he's great. He's a very creative kid. Had his first art show when he was a senior in high school. Wow. And, um, yeah, he's, he's really fun to watch. So I have very artistic, creative kids. The youngest one I'm hoping will be a finance major. There you go. There <laughs> Somebody's you go. got to bring in the money. <laughs> you got, yeah, you got one more. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for being oh, on my podcast. Thank you. This was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. I love meeting new people. I mean, the whole reason I started this podcast was to hear people's stories yeah. and just and get invested in their stories a little bit. And I, I kind of started off, for those who've wa- listened to a lot of these, I kind of started off with a lot of friends. <laughs> sure, of course. Because <laughs> I wanted to get comfortable <laughs> yeah, with yeah. it before I just dove into people I didn't really know much yeah. about. Because ki- it can be kind of hard to steer a conversation when I don't know anything to ask. Yeah. Um, but you made it very easy. Oh, it was a lot of fun. thanks. I enjoyed it. It was great. And it was great getting to hear all the uh, like amazing things you guys are doing here. Oh, I just love the United Way. I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed to work here. And I love Paris, Texas. And yeah. that's, you know, that's why I named it Paris, Texas. So, yeah, it's um, awesome. Thank you so much. And guys, just remember, you can tune in every Monday. We put out a new podcast. Um, and well, there's always a new story for you guys to hear. See you next week. Bye. Bye.